Okay, everybody, this is going to be a pretty good day, and it's going to be a very interesting uh, episode. I'm going to do a whole series with the guy I'm about to introduce, and it's all about medicines and wild edibles. So uh, this is my buddy, Byron Alexander. Hi, everybody. Welcome to our backyard uh, pharmacy. <laughs> and grocery store. <laughs> and grocery store, that's right. Okay, so Byron, you want to tell people what we found here? Sure, right here. We've been blessed to find a red belted polypore. Uh, these are actual uh, perennial, so they come back every year. Uh, they can grow up to 40 years. Uh, antibacterial, antimicrobial, uh, stops internal bleeding. Uh, you can just go on all day to be honest with you with the medicines that are involved with this particular polypore. Uh, when you see it actually protruding through a tree like this, uh, the mycelium is already fully engulfed this tree. So the mushroom is actually just a fruiting body. So as you would see, an apple tree produces apple. This is the apple of the mycelium, not the actual mycelium itself. So this is the fruiting body. Right here. Okay, and, and, I, and I talked about the, the mycelium network, the mycelia, uh, in, in a video I did with the Backwoods Barbarian. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. So make sure you uh, tune in and check that out. But uh, yeah, the mycelium network is an amazing, amazing network. Everything is connected. And uh, also, this is actually uh, anti-cancer, anti-microbial, uh, I believe I already said that. So, uh, yeah, that's our red belt of polypora right there, little beauties. Backyard medicines. So, uh, we didn't have to go too far. Byron suggested that we look for, uh, we'll, we'll find, look for truffle. Now, truffles are very hard to find to begin with. But we have, we have little friends in the forest that help us out. And I pointed out an area and Byron bent down and within a second, show them what you found Byron. I'm pretty excited. These are not supposed to exist in Newfoundland and Labrador, according to the books. Deer truffle, right there. Wow. Wicked, eh? Wow. So Byron has uh, taught me that when you look around, you'll see, uh, Spots where our little friends were digging for the for the truffle. So when you see that area, now do truffles tend to grow in groups? Like uh, when you find one, you might find others. Yes, normally you'll find a set of them, probably four or five. Kind of like the what, chaga, eh? Depending what type of truffle it is, I guess. You know, they're not supposed to be in Newfoundland, so. It's still all new to us. We're getting some analyzed over in Europe to find out. Yeah, Byron, what about that there? That looks like it's another one. Yep. We That's have a another, baby truffle. We have a baby truffle right there. So, yeah, they do grow in. Here we go. It's another one. Look at that. Just like that. Wow. Medicines are all around. Seen it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, dear. There's a nice truffle. Moose poop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, a couple of nice specimens. Just like that. Oh, that's wrong. Amazing, eh? Wow. Wow. <clears throat> Just like that. Are we going to look for any more specimens that our friends left us? Uh, probably in another spot. There might be, we're after finding three or four different types of truffles actually in this spot. Yeah. Uh, we actually haven't had the DNA analysis come back on them yet, but uh, we're pretty sure two is new species that's never been discovered before. Wicked. In eh? the world. So we're pretty excited for that. Yeah. That's, that's all good stuff. All good stuff. Of course, our location is going to be kept secret for now. Okay, so I was uh, I was just down in here, and I found a really good spot. I believe we're gonna find more truffles. But then I heard Byron getting a little excited, and this is why. 
This is known as artist conch. Uh, a lot of time you'll see people will actually uh, remove them from trees and they'll actually do a painting on the other side of them. Very nice. Uh, also known as white reishi. And the medicines that are in these are absolutely incredible. Um, everything from triterpenes. Wow, I don't know, mine's blue. I've never seen them this big before and this, this plentiful. This specimen here is probably 18 inches. I've never seen that, wow. We also have some smaller specimens right here are coming out. Uh, so again, this tree is totally engulfed in mycelium. This is just a fruiting body of it. So this is, I believe it's a white rot fungus. So these are decomposers of the forest. So this is what breaks everything down. So depending on the type of uh, bracket fungus this is under, will depend on what type of uh, materials in actual wood will break down and decompose into the forest floor. So they have a job here. So even when we do harvest, we harvest them, we'll take one for ourselves for medicines, that'll probably last you five years. So we don't over harvest anything. And we always, if we were to harvest this right now, we would actually uh, give an offering of tobacco for this, this is, uh, it's all sacred medicines. This is all about your intent going into it. So the more you put into it, more appreciation, the better the medicine will be. So, wow, wicked. Hi everybody. Well, we found uh, another uh, bracket fungus, polypore. This one is called Amadou, known as uh, horse hoof. Wow, what specimens. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize, if you're watching this from anywhere in North America right now, you are here because of this fungus. Uh, Iggy the Iceman, who they found over 5,000 years ago in an ice field, actually had two pieces of this around his neck. And two reasons they uh, realized that he was using it for, both uh, archeologists and anthropologists, is one, he had worms, so it was actually antibacterial, antiviral. So any kind of gut infections you might have, candida, so on and so forth. And it was used to carry fire. So when the Ice Age released, when people came from uh, South America, we were able to come here because we'd actually cut a little hole in this and you could actually put fire in it and it would last for days, even weeks. So this is a beautiful thing right here. It also has immune modulizers, which actually boosts your immune system up if it's too low or down if it's too high. It's just an amazing medicine right here in front of us. Wow. Good stuff. So we're finding a lot of uh, exciting stuff. I found some uh, spruce gum. Yes. You want to talk about the sure. properties of that? Sure. Spruce gum. Wow. Where do we start? Antiviral, antimicrobial. Uh, I use it for chewing gum. Uh, a lot of people don't realize digestion first starts in your mouth, not in your stomach. So if your saliva glands are not working properly, Digestion is going to be slow. Digestion is slow, your metabolism is slow. So great for weight loss also. Also for uh, cuts and wounds, antiviral, uh, just put it on. It's antiseptic uh, and you're good to go. So it's medicines everywhere. Okay, so we're, we're having a, 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 pretty good, a pretty good walk here today. I'll show you why. Yeah, it's weird. We have another artist conch or white reishi. Uh, wow, quite a specimen. Uh, it's hard to tell, but the reason they call it the artist cock, underneath, it is a polypore bracket fungus. And this particular one underneath is a flat, smooth surface. So a lot of people actually like to take some uh, designs and paint on them. That's why they call it the artist cock. Uh, white reishi. Uh, again, we have reishi. Most of your reishi you get probably comes from uh, China or somewhere in that area. Uh, one of the most widely used herbal medicines as far as bracket fungus is reishi. Uh, so we have it, it's a different genus uh, than the regular one you probably get in the store, it's the white reishi, but uh, still has all the characteristics of cancer fighting, immune modulating, uh, just wow. Packed full of goodness, antibacterial, antiviral, which they pretty much all are. So another fine specimen right here, wow. So, if you found uh, this episode interesting, we only brought you five. There's over 60 uh, wild medicines, or uh, medicines and wild 
uh, edibles out there that we're going to bring you. And I thought I was going to be able to bring you guys all the medicines in one video, but it's just, it's going to be take too much. It's uh, going to be too long, the video. Um, so I'm going to bring you the medicines first, and then we're going to do uh, a video on each when to harvest it, how to harvest it, and uh, and and how to prepare it, right? So it, it's I, I think if you are into prepping, if you are into uh, coming out into the forest and, and and finding wild edible foods, foraging for foods and stuff like that, there, uh, this is going to be a series that I think that you guys are really going to love, and you're not going to want to miss. So a uh, huge thank you to Byron and you'll see his uh, fiance uh, Jasmine in, in some of these videos as uh, we all go out together and dissect the woods looking for medicines and wild edibles and we'll bring, a, bring all that to you guys. So this is going to be a series, it's going to go over, over the course of this year and probably into next year because we've already missed some some incredible stuff like some of this stuff grows in most people's backyards already and they don't even know the medicinal purposes of it or uh, how to harvest it and, and make jams and jellies and all that stuff with so much of the stuff that just grows around us each and every day so if you like this video stay tuned a lot more exciting stuff to come <laughs> 